Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, shocker, Google Plus didn't work right. Um, the Hangouts. I had to reinstall um, all of my stuff, apparently. So, whatever. Did you have to reinstall yours? No. That is awesome that you didn't have to do that because it's that was... also a bit worrying because something bad might happen halfway through. Let's not hope. Let's be positive. Well, knock on wood, we've never had something bad, at least on this show, oh. happen during a show. On well, if that isn't the case of death, nothing is. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you saw the last episode of Pearl Harbor Job, the show that you never watch that I do every yeah. once in a while. Like, I can't we were right in the middle of a show, and we just stopped. <clears throat> it, it, like, kept cutting out and cutting out, and then all of a sudden it just went, like, bloop, and it just, like, completely cut out, and then Joe um, messaged me, and he's like, hey, uh, let's just do a show another time. <laughs> and we've never gotten back to it. <laughs> I just want to... Okay, but, so, Oh, I just ahead. want to say that it's not because I can't bear the thing, not because of the quality of the show, it's just about wrestling, and I, I'm lost after about five seconds. Oh, yeah, it's okay. I just wanted to state that. Yeah, you don't have to, it's fine. <laughs> You're a hater, it's okay. Um, <laughs> but really, folks, um, this, welcome to episode 29 of Podcast 451. Yay. Hi, everyone. Yay. Our janky um, self-publishing podcast. Oh, that's not very good. <laughs> like the show. <laughs> <laughs> like our show. We're so much fun. <laughs> no, um, this is the show where we take you on our self-publishing journey with us so you could learn from our mistakes because apparently we make a lot of them. So, um, and when I say we, that should be. <laughs> when I say we, I mean me. So, um, only because yeah. I don't understand what we're supposed to be doing. I make it's plenty all... of my own mistakes. Anyway, let's but let's stop. As all this. promised, yeah, yeah, let, yeah. We're awesome. Let's just deal with it. Yeah. Um, what what do you house it? Oh, um, to make good on a promise that we made last week. Today we're um, the main meat of the show is how to make an awesome book description on your Amazon page, and then Yay. I I wanted to take it a step further and talk about um, using Amazon Author Central and making your author page because um, there's a lot of authors that don't do this, and um, it's really a cool thing that you should do. So um, we'll we'll be talking about that a bunch too. So, Very important. So I think everybody needs to know about it. Oh, and if you have any questions, um, the Q and A deal is open, and um, I will. How be... do they get in touch? I don't know. If you're watching on Google Plus, you just ask a freaking question. No, but know. what happens on the YouTube thing? Is it still a oh, YouTube? Oh, on YouTube. Thing? On YouTube, I have the YouTube open. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can ask questions there, and I will see them. So, um, I might not see them immediately, but we will get to them. And I want to apologize for last week because um, I had a lot of caffeine and I was taking my B complex. Um, so, I was full of all sorts of energy. And I had a list of things that I wanted to get through. And we got through the list really quick. But every time Zoe started talking, I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. So next on the list is blah, 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 blah. Because I wanted to make sure we hit everything. And then we hit everything in like seven minutes. And, and I didn't uh, even notice because I'm used to it. <laughs> I was a complete ass. So um, I, uh, I apologize greatly for that. So, so what else is going so, on? Well, we've had a busy week, haven't we? Yes, another busy week. Super busy week, and it's just going to get worse. Yeah, we've got lots of news. Oh, thank you, Viola. Yay! Viola says, I love your beard. <laughs> Yay, don't we all? My beard loves you back. So, <laughs> yay, thank you. Um, but... So, yeah, this week we had a ton of stuff go down, and I don't know if um, we want to 
jump right... Do we want to jump into it? I mean, we might as well. This is our fucking show, right? That's what we kind of do. Yeah, we've got a lot to cover this today, haven't we? So we might as well get going. Just steadily away, though. Let's just take it easy. Okay, well, yeah. and talking about taking it easy, Viola says, I'm stoned and I stumbled upon this. What are you guys talking about? Well, um, we are drinking... I'm drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes, so that's... I've just realized I haven't got anything to drink, which is a big epic fail. What a loser. Um, I know. We're talking talking about self-publishing and getting your books up on Amazon, and then we're going to be talking about Season 2 of Black Star Canyon. So um, hopefully that's something you're into. Which is Creek Series. If If you're into Twin Peaks or... Anything mystery, dark fictiony kind of thing, then you'll probably really like it. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm just gonna say for now on that everyone's really gonna like it, no matter what they like. They will. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that there's somebody in there for everybody, especially yeah, so. a gossipy shopkeeper named Zilly Wood. <laughs> we'll talk about this in a moment. Okay, um, but yeah. Um, so, do you want to do you want to start we the news? We need the news headlines. Yeah. Yeah, hit it. Okay. I'm doing extra because I short changed everybody last week. Podcast. What my news? Thank you. Thank you very much. And tonight in the headlines, no, um, but seriously, folks, we have a ton of stuff to talk about, and I know that I'm kind of acting like a psycho right now, but I'm just super excited. You have no idea how stoked we are about all the stuff that's happening, and um, the majority of that stuff that's happening is Black Star Canyon related. So... Um, last week we were talking about, and you know what, this, it was last week's episode that really got us, um, flipped out about what we did, right? Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. was, wasn't it? We just kind of stumbled across that with the, we were discussing, um, book covers and how it was the book cover awards for March, ebook covers for March. Yeah, awards. and we were talking about how we wanted to do a new, uh, you look like my aunt. You're beautiful. Are we talking You'll... to you? Or yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming I look like her aunt, but it could be you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Viola. You're amazing. <laughs> okay. So, um, real quick. So, last week we were talking about the book covers, and we, we wanted to do something cool with the new Black Star Canyon covers, and the more we talked about it and the more we got into it, the more we thought we should go back and redo the covers from the first season, too. You're awesome. Viola says we're awesome. Oh, thanks. Um, We try our best. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Not hard enough sometimes. Yeah. So what we did, we went like batshit crazy this week, and we did a bunch of new covers for the first season, and we decided that not only are we doing the new covers for the first season, but we're also going to be releasing the first season in like a pocket paperback mm-hmm. uh, version Which as we're well. I'm really excited about, because the, yeah. the idea of having the paper book, paperbacks with these cool covers is just really neat, isn't it? The, the thought of it actually being able to hold them. Yeah, and the thing that's weird is is that we were always gonna do the first season mm-hmm. as a paperback, but um, decided that the individual covers also looked so cool that we were just gonna put them out each one as a paperback because they even if no one gets them, we're gonna get them. And they look yeah. pretty cool as shit. <clears throat> so in a little bit, um, we're going to... I mean, I guess we could just do it now. So we are going to unveil the new book covers now. Yeah? 
at least for the first four episodes. Episode yeah. five and the season one cover are not ready yet. Um, yeah. so We've been let me actually, really hard this week. Yeah. Ugh. Let me take that off. So this is the new episode one cover. Okay. So season one, episode one. It a bit because we can't see the texture on it very well. Okay, well, how how should I tip it? I'm trying to keep it out of the thing. Hello, Benito. And hey, Benito. How that looks. Yeah, so that's, that's looking good. One. We were trying to <clears> do... <throat> we were... Go ahead. We were trying to do the... Um, we discussed last week that we came across this girl who's 21. You can go and check her work out. She's called Risa Rodil. Um, so go and check it out. Her Tumblr and um, she's got a website as well, hasn't she? RisaRodil.com. And she does a lot of this soul bath kind of inspired, very uh, minimalist, cool sort of color, you know, like a limited color palette. And we just and bought it. It just sent us off, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, we've all like I've always wanted these to look like this, but I just did a really shitty job on the first season, personally. So here is the episode two cover. So all these covers have, um, and because of the glare, you can't really see the texture on these. <clears throat> but um, really, it's really cool textures running through underneath as well. Yeah, um, and then here's. The episode three cover. Oh wow, that's my favorite. I think this was my favorite until this one. This is the episode four cover. Yay! And I really, really like this one a lot. <laughs> it's fucking cool as shit. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you can see the texture on that one really well. So we're. I think we might have to show those off a bit later on as well, just in case there's more people have a look. Yeah, I mean, I think they're amazing. So, so what I want to do right now <clears throat> is um, kind of go through the calendar of events that are going to take place over the next two months um, for Black Star Canyon, because if you are a fan of Black Star Canyon, this is going to be extremely exciting for you. And if you're not a fan yet of Black Star Canyon, you will be. So just fucking pay attention. That's. I think you need to first of all describe. Okay, Black Star, Black Star Canyon. Star Let me explain it to you. Black Star Canyon is a serialized fiction book series serial that we started um, over Christmas is when we started the first season. And basically, what it is, it's like it's like you're watching Twin Peaks or Lost or um, Northern Exposure or American Gothic or something like that, but instead of watching a new episode every week, you get a new book every week. Uh, and each book is an episode, and it comes out every week until the season's done. And um, out of everything we've done so far, Black Star Canyon has been the like number one thing that we do. It's consistent and people like it. Um, it's the only thing we have that, like all of our other books, they go through like peaks and then they drop. And then there's like a little valley. Black Star Canyon is the only thing that's been going like this. Yeah. You know, it's it, the sales keep going. People are really into it. And we're really into it. <clears throat> it's kind of like my baby. And, um,. Tell everybody so, what you tell. Give everybody a rough outline so they know. Okay, what basically, about. it opens up with the mayor of Black Star Canyon walking his dog one morning, and he stumbles upon a, a dead body of a young girl, like a 18, 19 year old chick. And um, as the investigators, the detectives from Black Star Canyon, start digging into this murder, it starts unraveling all of these other secrets and mysteries of the people in the town, and these people do not want these secrets coming out. But it's like every single person has some baggage that they don't want coming out, and it's somehow all interwoven. 
And yeah. it goes from being just like a typical mystery to getting a little supernatural to a little dreamy to some weird shit. But the thing yeah. that I like about it the most is because if you know anything about my work, like making movies and stuff, I, I jump genres a lot. I, I just said I jump genres. Yeah, you did. I jump genres a lot. So it's like I'll do suspense thriller, I'll do exploitation movie, I'll do sci-fi horror, I'll do... I, I do all these little things. And Black Star Canyon's great because there's so many different characters and different types of characters. I get to do all these things. Yeah. In one story. So, like, we have, like, your hard-boiled detective thriller. We have um, your uh, <clears throat> almost like a western with Sheriff Reagan. Yeah, you know, he's, he's my like, favorite. He's just like an old kind of curmudgeon -y sheriff, Drunk you know. With a huge mustache. Yeah, you know, typical dude. And then we have like kind of thug kids doing fucked up shit. And then we have like like nice little high school kids getting into shit they shouldn't be getting into. And then we have like a uh, <clears throat> like a power hungry, money hungry guy that wants to take over the town. Yeah, so there's like the political intrigue as well with the mayor as well. And yeah, so there's all this like really cool stuff and as it goes some of the stuff gets more fucked up like a guy who could take off his head and um, just kind of scary shit and yeah, a guy who gets his, there, a guy who gets his eyeballs cut out. You know? And um, just I like... Think my I think my favourite part of it is just the town itself. The town, I know it's like a corny cliche, but the town is like a character in itself. It's like that classic, isolated, strange little place, isn't it, where everybody knows everybody's business, but yet they don't. For sure. Um, you know, and everybody's tripping over each other and wanting to know what's going on. But like superficially, superficially, everyone in the town knows everything about everybody. Yeah. But like, but as it, soon as you peel that layer. Like, yeah. you realize how, like, the, the reason why most of these people live out in this town in the middle of nowhere is so they could be isolated to do the fucked up shit that they do kind of thing. So, yeah. that's what's really And it's what's all really surrounded fun. by forests and, you know, woodlands and nature kind of thing. And it's all just like, oh, it's just great. I love it. I think the setting makes, like... That kind of setting and westerns are awesome settings for me, so that appeals as well, particularly. But it's just the characters are awesome in it. So if any of that appeals to you, you're gonna love it because it has bits of everything in it. It totally does. Yeah. Um, so, in fact, if you want to read the first episode of the first season, if you go to Kobo, it's free right now. Or if you um, email me um, at creeperson at gmail .com. Um, it's under our free books on our website, so I can send yeah. that to you that way too. Um, but next Sunday, a week from today, all of the first season books will have their new covers, and hopefully we will be moving towards having all of the... Um, what do you call it, all of the paperbacks done. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Then, also, every week, on, Zoe doesn't even know this, I thought of this before we started the show. Every week on this show, we're going to be giving away um, a season one, a complete season one ebook to someone. Oh, wow. That's and we'll figure out how we're going to do that. Um, but there will be something. So every week between now and um, June 1st, or between next week and June 1st, we're going to be giving that away. Um, but there are some things, because June 1st is when the new season starts. And, uh, and I just, can I just highlight to everybody that the covers that we've just shown you are, the way that Creek described it to you is that Black Star Canyon Season 1 is split up into five episodes. So each cover we showed you is a cover for the episode within the first season, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the one with the phone was episode one of season one, 
you know, the one with the door is episode two, season one, and it goes through like that. And they will be coming out as separate paperbacks that are all still part of season one. And Creep is now in the process of writing season two. So we're doing yeah. this as a build up. Super build up. And Chris, yeah. the, Chris, oh uh, wait, no, Viol, Viola has a question here. She says, I am a fan of Christy, I'm, uh, Agatha Christie, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, love yeah. done it ever since reading, and then uh, there were none. Oh, that's the best. That's oh. uh, then um, the murder of Roger Ackroyd and fell in love with Perot. How do you say? I always say his name. I say Perot. That's not right. Poirot. Right? Pyro. Quaro. Quaro. Okay, she can say it. Um, there is my mystery. And then she says, "Can you read that out clearly, please? Because I can't understand what you're saying. You're mumbling." I just went over it. I like. I can't go back to it now. Oh. But she, she's basically asking, "Is Black Star Canyon similar to Who Done It's and Agatha Christie's work?" And I would say completely, one hundred percent yes. If very like, much if, so. like if David Lynch was doing it, or yeah. if um. Okay, imagine like Agatha Christie meets Lost, kind of thing. Lost confusing because Lost puts it in a sort of desert islandy sort of situation, but it's the idea it of the confusion and the idea yeah. of all these people not communicating with one another and making yeah. things work. It's that kind of thing. Um, there's a ton of murder. There's a ton of people going missing, and then people coming back mysteriously. And um, a ton of who done it stuff. Yeah, if you if you like um, Agatha Christie stuff, I mean, if you go to um, Kobo.com, you could get the first episode for free and just check it out and see if you like it. Um, or Creeperson.com, and I'll send you one. Um, yeah. But the big thing that we want to talk about on this is on June 1st, when we launch Season 2, we're also going to be having a all-day Facebook live event um, thing where we're going to be answering questions and um, giving you teasers for um, the episodes that are going to be coming out, and we're going to be giving stuff away and all sorts of other stuff. So probably by next week... I'll have the event page set up mm -hmm. and start inviting everybody to it or whatever. But the other big plus is what we are trying to do, um, this is just kind of something we've been toying with, and I think it's time to do it, but um, we are setting a goal for ourselves to sell a 1,000 copies of episode one of season two the first week it comes out which might sound crazy, but it really isn't that big of a deal at all. But it's we're trying to get everyone involved so everyone, the fans of Black Star Canyon and all this stuff, all feel like we're all a part of something kind of thing. So yeah. what we're going to do... Too. What we're going to do is, as a added bonus, if you get Episode 1 the first week, it will also have a special free book called Welcome to Black Star Canyon, which is like a kind of funny tour guide book to Black Star Canyon. And in saying that, I need your help. What we're doing is in the Black Star Canyon book, it's going to have the history of the town and all this other stuff, but there's also going to be pictures of things like, oh, this is about people hiking, and there'll be a little bit about people hiking. So if any of the listeners to the show or fans of Black Star have, like, a picture of them hiking, I want to put it in the book. And then we'll talk about, like, the diner. And if you have any pictures... Obviously, of it has to be... Obviously, it has, if you're in countryside, it's got to look kind of like it would be in a sort of mountainous, exactly. woody re region. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're in the desert, it's not going to work so well. <laughs> so, maybe, yeah. so maybe pick, like... I don't know, like a garage or a, a library or something. If you if you Just live in the anything. Desert. like if 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 you read Black Star Canyon and you're like, wow, I totally want to be a part of this, and you know Black Star Canyon, 
you'll know what looks like Black Star Canyon and what doesn't look like Black Star Canyon. But one of the other really fun things we're going to do is we're going to put, like, fake ads in the Welcome to Black Star Canyon book. So if you are into any kind of, like, um, design or anything like that, and there's a character in the book you like, like, for instance, um, Michael, who is... um, Henry's gay nephew that works at his handy shop with him, he's going to have, like, a classified ad. Like, looking, like, is there any gay guy in Black Star Canyon? I'm super horny, blah, 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 whatever. (laughs) Um, I'm going to do a thing where I'm Gus, and I'm like, oh, come to Gus's garage, and I'll fix your motorcycle, and I'll be like, oh, you know, like... um, Holding, like, an exhaust pipe. Sure. (laughs) Or a wrench. So if there's anything like that that you um, want to do to be a part of this book, um, I totally, greatly support you doing that. Yeah, we'd really appreciate it. Just throw yourselves into it. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of, um, I guess that's kind of all there is about the new season. Like... I'm super freaking geeked out about it and excited about it, so I'm kind of all over the place right now. Yeah, it is really exciting. We've got loads to do. It's going to be a really busy few months for us to do all this because we've got lots of other stuff we're doing at the same time. We're going to get you... You're going to be doing lots of interviews and stuff like that, and we'll let you know where things are so that you can read up and see where he's going to be. And I'll be in Sioux Falls the first week of June as well. Yeah. So if anyone's in Sioux Falls, come out and see the movies and stuff. But anyway, so I think that's the end of the news. Do you think so? Um. Last thing is, if you haven't signed up for the mailing list, go to creeperson.com, and there's like 12 different places you can sign up for the mailing list on there. Um, and you'll get updates and all that other fun, cool stuff. And then um, just, I guess, get caught up on Black Star Canyon if you haven't yet because it's going to show up as soon as freaking possible, right? Yeah. I don't know what um, to talk about the, anymore. I'm like, uh. the only The only other thing as well is the other book, I mean, Creep's got a lot of books out at the minute, but the one that he has, the first chapter of Zombie Alpha, which is a a sort of his take, a new weird take on the zombie genre, um, and the first chapter of that is up on his Facebook page. Yeah? Yeah. So you can go and check that out and have a read um, and leave a comment and see what you think. And what's your, where do, where do people find you on Facebook? Oh, that's a shit question. Um, I think if you just search Creep Creeperson, I'll show up. I can't remember because my Facebook page used to be my, like, my my like page is Creep Creeperson. My my page is Mr. Creep Creeperson. But the URL used to be my film company's page. Oh. So I never got to change that. So it, I can't remember what it says. If you have a scroll through anywhere, you'll find it. Um, it's the first chapter, and it's a really good read. So just have a look through and see whether that's going to be one that you're going to like. And that book's already out, isn't it? Zombie Alpha. Yeah. It, this is, again, the first episode in a series in the first season. Yeah. The, well, the thing with Zombie Alpha, it's more of a series book where I'm only writing four of them, I think. Mm-hmm. And I'm just every couple months I'll write another one, whereas... It's not like bam, 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 bam. You know, like Black Star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I think we could jump into Amazon now, huh? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna hand <clears throat> the baton to Zozo to kind of take care of. <laughs> well, we're just discussing this, aren't we? Because this is something that we discussed. We kind of done some work on it because, um, like we discussed last week, my dad is actually publishing, self-publishing his novel that he's been faffing about for probably years now, trying to get it published um, 
by uh, what what do you call it by an independent publisher? Is like he was just sending it out to um, he was sending it out publish. to try and get it published yeah. from a company, um, various companies, and he got loads of letters and people saying yeah they liked it, but they didn't want to use it at this particular time and all. So we got really good sort of response. And a lot of people really enjoyed it, but it just wasn't the right time and stuff like that. So he decided to go the self-publishing route, possibly because we've kind of told him that we're kind of going along the same thing and we've got a bit of experience now so we can help him with it. Creeps actually formatted it for him. So in the past week, it's all done. The cover's done. It's taken some bloody effort, hasn't it? He keeps sending bit. it back with like he's found one double spacing that needs sorting out in like forty thousand pages or something ridiculous. So it's been going backwards and forwards. But he's now at the stage where it's to go up on his Kindle page to publish it. And we're gonna go the Kindle direct publishing route and we're gonna go the Kindle select route. Now, do you want to explain briefly what the Kindle Select is again for those who don't know? Yeah. What KDP Select is, it's a way for you to help kind of market your book if you don't have... It, it's really important. It's, it's more important if you don't have a fan base yet because yeah. what it does is um, it gives you a couple different options. It gives you either being able to make the book free for five days over a 90-day period, any days you want. So you could run certain specials and stuff like that. And then um, it also gives you the option to do this thing called a Kindle countdown, where if you want to put your book on sale for a good sale price or whatever, you could do that, and then um, there will be like a clock next to your title showing the customers how much time they have to be able to get this book for this great price or what whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about it is you have to be exclusive to Amazon. So you can't have your book up on any other sites for 90 days. So Amazon's the only place that could carry it. And back in the day, like three years ago, this was a really cool thing because of the way Amazon's algorithms worked and how they're uh, pages were set up, like your top 100 free and all this other stuff. Now it's not as cool as it used to be because they kind of buried that stuff. So it's people who are looking for free books, they have an easier time finding it. It's not just something that's bam, right on the front page like it used to be. So it is good to be able to do that because if you want to have your book free for any amount of time, Without doing KDP Select, you have to go through a bunch of stupid bullshit like we had to go through that takes a couple months to sort out. Yeah. I think our mistake mainly really was the fact we put everything up on there instead of going for certain, maybe the first one of each series or something like that so that people, you know what I mean? We kind yeah. of put everything up. So then we had to wait for the three months for each book and then of course we forgot and they rolled over again because it does that's that, it doesn't it? you have to be careful of they if you don't know when your book's coming out yeah. or you have to go back in and uncheck it or else it'll re-enroll the book yeah if you don't actually say that you don't want to keep it in the KDP select it continues to do it I so think you have we another have to back in there for three cycles yeah because we, we're not so good with the date Reminding yeah. ourselves of stuff, which it looks reminds like me that nine months or I, some shit. Yeah, and I went for the, um, you know, the Kindle, not the Kindle, the Amazon Prime. Forgot to take it off, didn't I? Oh, did Just you? A, yeah, <laughs> that's a Prime. Prime, no pun intended. Um, example of my of how they sucker people in, like me. Yeah. So anyway. You gotta be careful. Yeah. So anyway, we've got to the stage that we're going to put this book up. His book is called Faladin, for anybody who's interested. Um, it's a sort of... It's historical fiction. It's a historical fiction about the First World War. Um, it's a good time for him to do it because it's the centenary of the First World War uh, this year. Um, 
and it's kind of an alternative history. So in Dad's book, certain events happen um, differently, and it's discussing how those um, events could change the course of history about the First World War. And it's all based around Falladon Hall, where Sir Edward Grey, who was the foreign um, minister, I think, um, who had like he played a big role in the decisions made about going into the war and all this kind of thing, about how his views were changed about things um, to do with an accident with his wife. So anyway, we've got this story and it's all edited, it's all ready to go. And we're at the stage where we've got to put it up on the KDP select page. Now, if any of you have d done this, um, it's quite basic up to the point, but there's a lot of things in there that you can add to it to make it much more useful. Now, we're going to discuss those in a bit. Do you want to talk about that first and go on to the de description after, or shall I do the descriptions first? No, go ahead. Well, basically, um, I've been doing the research. I mentioned last week that we were talking about descriptions, that your, your book description, how important it is. Um, yeah. And we've been reading you know, quite a few blog posts and things like that that sort of discuss this. And I found it fascinating. There's, there's one here called Catherine Caffeinated. That's the name of the blog. I'm just um, going to say real quick, her blog is gorgeous. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's a beautiful blog. Like just yeah, it to really that, is. It's, it's really, really great. It's really professional and attractive looking, isn't it? Which is always important. So, like, anyway. I, I would take it behind the middle school and get it pregnant. <laughs> I have no doubt. Right. So, this particular um, article that we were looking at is called 11 Ingredients of a sizzling book description. Um, and it's put in by Mark Edwards, who is basically a Kindle author, and his sales get up into the six figures now. He's a really prolific um, author. And he's basically, if you read the article, he's basically had a book that was teetering outside of the top 100 in whatever category it was in. And he couldn't understand why this was, so he did like you know a lot of research into it, and you know all the information that was given about it compared to the ones that were doing better. And he realised that it was probably something to do with the book description. So he experimented, messed around with it, and rehashed the description. And within an hour, his sales had doubled. According to him, within an hour his sales had doubled and within two weeks it was number two in that category that he'd been struggling with, which is like pretty amazing statistics when you look at it like that. And of course not everybody's going to be as successful as that with it, but it obviously, it, you know, it demonstrates how important the description is. Um, we're going to go through each of these points, but we're not going to like... You know, I mean, the article's there for you to read, but we're going to discuss it and see how it relates to some of our books and how we might be able to change them. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's something we're going to have to do and go through each one of ours and make sure that we're doing these things. Because the beauty of it is that you can change them. You can change them around and, and check with your statistics and see if it makes a difference or not. You know, and... This is something that um, published authors who aren't doing it themselves, who aren't doing the self-publishing route, don't have the benefit of doing. Once it's in, it's, it's in, you know. But we could, we actually have the beauty of being able to re-edit it, fiddle about with things, and create something that works for, for us, which is great, I think. Okay, so point one is make it clear. Have you got any comments before we start? Just people saying hello. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, Thanks making for it joining clear. us. I am not good at making things clear. I make things very murky. And okay. That's... So do you think this might be something that needs to needs to be sorted out? 
I mean, not, I mean, yeah, but I mean, it, it's pretty common sense. It, it, like, it's almost like having your elevator pitch ready, you know, like being able to just clearly say exactly what is happening in your book. Yeah, it, it's well, not rocket. No, it isn't. I'm going to go into a bit more detail about it to show where it plays though. The, I actually looked up another one to compare it, and this was Create Space Resources, and it's a guy called Richard Wrigley who's been an author for 20 years. He writes the young adult series The Oz Chronicle, and, which has got multiple awards for stuff, and he's basically done his version as well. Um, and it's quite interesting how how different some of the points are and how similar others are. So we're gonna I'm gonna dot in between these two ones. We'll try and remember to put these links up so you can have a look. Whether we do or not is a different kettle of fish. But anyway. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I know. We always promise these things and whether we do it or not is a totally different It's thing. never a we. I don't promise I know it's me who says it, but we're a team, remember? You promise stuff, man. I know. Right. Basically, the first one's make it clear. You've got to know with a quick the reader has to know with a quick skim of the description what kind of book, what it's about, and the story. The story's the most important, so if it's an erotic story, for example, like Fifty Shades of Grey, these put um you need to say that. You need to get that into the description clearly. No messing about. Okay? Um, this other guy, Richard Ridley, I'm trying to find what he says. Um, he's put, don't include subplots. You just need the main plot, the main theme. Use primary action that drives the book. So that's more or less the same kind of thing. That's really no. good. Yeah. Okay. Then this is another useful one that he mentioned that the other guy mentions as well that you've got to write in your genre. So whatever book oh hang on, we've got a comment. <laughs> okay. Um Bod Jap, I think is his name, says What is the name of Beauty Chick? Again, that could be me, but I think he's referring to you. <laughs> well, Bob, I'm blushing a bit. <laughs> that's that's freaking Zoe Humphreys, man. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. That's very sweet. You, you can stalk her on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, I'm all over the place, Bob. Right, I'm really embarrassed now. Okay, right in your genre. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Um, uh, you're funny. You're all embarrassed. It's funny. Okay, there are certain rules for each genre. Find books. This is a really handy tip as well. Find books that are popular in the genre that you're writing and study the descriptions. And this Richard Ridley adds at the end of his. Um, hang on. Read as many descriptions in your genre as possible. It's a great way to figure out the industry standard. The basic thing is, you know, the industry standard, the descriptions of these big books in that genre work. So use them. Use what the words they use. Um, write it in the style of your genre. So in my dad's case, it would be, it's a very British, you know, sort of old-fashioned, um, style of writing, isn't it? He's done it in a, in well, a classic literature. He has to like be in historical fiction, and then he could also be there's um, subcategories for uh, British literature. Yeah. Um, so those okay. are the two things he should focus on. Yeah. Um, Actually, also um, military literature, stuff like that. Got it. That would work. What did you say? Military. That? Yeah. There's there's sub genres. Of, can you not hear me? Are, are we on the same page here? Yeah, you just keep cutting out. Okay. 
Number three, don't be afraid. Military. Yeah. Yes, I heard. Number three, don't be afraid to reference other books or writers. Um, potential readers are looking for books that will explain exactly what kind of book it is. Um, so, for example, if it's an adult vampire novel, there's no harm in referencing Anne Rice. That you know, in the style, Anne Rice style, whatever, because they're going to understand straight away what kind of style it is. So I don't know how that would appeal to our book. Well, I mean, again, like saying that it's David like Lynch. Agatha Christie. Or David yeah, Lynch, Agatha like, Christie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Oh my god, Taking it's my popping vitamin. vitamins. Popping vitamins live. You know what's funny? We were talking about how we've never had any problems once we started the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I just dropped a vitamin on the floor, dude. Now my dog's going to have extra energy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're all having a bad delay in cutting out, so I kind of yeah. jinxed the show. My fault. Um, a, a small point, but a very important point, the most important one is here, the book is more important than you are. Um, remember to sell the book rather than yourself. So you're not and on there going... For that is that that's what the Amazon Author Central is for, to pimp you. Yes. Which on we'll your talk book, about in a minute. Which we'll talk about. Okay, so go ahead. I won't interrupt. Um, no, you, that's exactly what I needed to say. Um... And Richard Ridley is actually <laughs> kind of added to this, which is really interesting. That you are writing the description as a publisher, not an author. I don't know if anyone can see this. Why don't you talk? Because he's just putting me off currently. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Write the description as a publisher, not an author, making an impact is the principal concern, what will move the reader to, I can't even read what I've said there, to know more, to want to know more, um, motivate the reader to add to cart. You have to write with your head, not with your heart. Put Godzilla down, I can't concentrate. <laughs> oh, it's too easy. Um, what else do we need to know? Is anybody commenting? Does anybody have anything they want to ask? Nope, not yet. The first line is the most important. So this is really I important as far as we... Yeah, the first line... Um, if the first line is right, the reader won't read on. This applies to your book as well. Um, you need to encapsulate the whole book in that sentence, draw people in, Make hairs on the back of the neck stand up. It's worth spending time on this. So that's a huge point. It sounds easy, but again, that one sentence is a huge big deal. Now, this is this is a point that makes it very difficult, very very different to the other guy, in that he, in this one here, the first one that I mentioned with Mark Edwards, he says that the make the description as long as it needs to be. There's no hard and fast rule about the length of the description. Maybe it can be summarized in a few sentences, maybe four paragraphs is what it needs to really draw them in. Right. The other guy, Richard Ridley, in his blog, is completely contrasting to that in that he keep it under 150 words. So that it should be able to be summarized in a single short sentence. No subplot or character development. What is the book about? What will make readers interested? So that's like huge, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm on the fence about that. Because I was working on new descriptions for Black Star Canyon, and <clears throat> I'm not saying Black Star Canyon is all subplot, but there are a lot of characters that have a lot of stuff going on. And so in the new description, I was doing, you know how like in the new books we have the previously in Black Star Canyon? And it's yeah. just like a bullet point list of stuff. I was doing a bullet point list of 
like situate like what is driving each character through the book. You know, and now I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't do that. No, I think from basically I think from what they're saying is the the problem with that is you're gonna lose people's interest by going on too much about everybody in it. You but need to encapsulate the whole thing. Okay, you think? Pardon? If it's like a bullet point list, you think it's okay? Not from this information. Okay. I think as far as Black Star Canyon, you don't need to go into details about everything that's happening. It needs to be about the general description of what the book is about and to grip people to make them want more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, plot point seven is don't be boring. Every line has to be compelling. Move the story on. Like the book. Number eight is make them laugh, cry or cower. Use emotions. How is your book going to make the reader feel? So that's a very important one for you with Black Star. You know, yeah. it's, it's dark, it's unsettling. You know what I mean? It's got that sort of um, suffocating kind of, what's the word? You know, kind of, I can't think of the word, you know, when you don't like small spaces. Claustrophobic. Yes. Yeah. That's the one. You know, that kind of sort of, tight-knit, weird feel about it. And that's what you've got to get over to the to whoever's reading it. Not explaining what each person's doing in it. Yeah. I think that's what they're trying to get across. And the interesting thing is, is that the other guy has kind of said that as well. That um, Use emotional power words, which is quite interesting. Trying to evoke emotion, um, same as in the book. So you have to get that same thing over. Use power words such as tormented, charismatic, passion, obsession, that kind of thing. And he said, use, like, you can Google power words if you're not sure about, like, certain particular things to use that will be most effective. Don't overdo it. Be sparing and strategic. And he said, if he had to use, you know, like a rough guide as to how many, within a 125 word description, he would use, like, six to ten power words within that. Which again is quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Um, where are we now? Testimonials. Yeah, use testimonials. And the interesting thing I found out, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory that, that if you have quotes from well-known authors or anything like that, you can put those in. But the interesting thing, as he said, it's best to put it in a block. You know, not just dot it around it in amongst the, the description. Yeah. Put it in a sort of separate block where people can look at that, maybe after the yeah. description or something. We do that, um, yeah. That yeah, and the, another interesting thing is he said, even if it's your anti mori this is the way he's put it, use that. If somebody who likes the book, you just don't have to tell everybody that it's your anti mori Just put who it is and the, the quote for whatever they said about it. There's no harm in doing that. It's still a testimonial of how good your book is. Um, he's put make the characters live or live as well as um, the story it's vital to get a good sense of the characters across most importantly their big problem terrible dilemma personal demons you need the re right reader to identify with them um, have to be big problems though don't make it like you know something trivial the other guy here said about I'm jiggling backwards and forwards with all my notes here. Well, he'd said before that not to go into too much detail about that again. So I think really you need to kind of just include that in there somewhere just to get a feeling of the characters. Not go into huge detail about it, but to get a feeling across so that the person who is reading the description feels for them, you know? They get an idea just in a couple of words even about how important they are. Um, and number 11, which I think is really important, this is the last point on here, is 
makes the reader desperate to know what happens. And this is really important as far as you do. Yeah. You end, end the description with a cliffhanger. Now, the way that you've set yours out with the series is that at the end of every episode there's a cliffhanger, isn't there? Yeah. So that your the reader is like left thinking, oh my god, but I'm going to have to buy the next episode to find out what happens, obviously. And the idea that you do that in the description as well is great if you can do that. So that's something to really think about as well, to lead the reader in to, to the point where they're so curious it's killing them to know what happens next. You know, how, how do they find out what's going to go on? It's got to be, don't give too much away, it's got to be intriguing. Just grab their attention, drag them in. And again, she's put the ability to edit your description like this is a huge, a huge advantage that other um, authors don't have. And if we go back to this guy, this is Richard Ridley again. Um, he's suggested that you write your description in. <coughs> you're describing it in present tense. Your description has to be present tense. You are describing as if you're sitting face to face with the reader. They've asked you what the book's about, and you're describing it face to face. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's really good. Yeah, so whatever tense the book is in, whether it's in, you know, third person, first person, whatever, it doesn't matter. Your description, it has to be in present tense. And that ties in, again, that you're writing as the publisher, not the author. You're writing, yeah. you know, which, again, is really important, I think. Um, I think that's a really good thing to even say that when you're writing your descriptions, you're writing as a publisher and not an author. Yeah, because I not forget that. Out. That sounds stupid, but that is a very, very simple thing to do that I think a lot of people don't realize. I know it's that's one bit that really stuck out, out to me when I was reading this because you've got to remember that you are the marketer in this situation. You're not the, the author anymore. You're in a marketing hat. You have your marketing hat on. It, you know what I mean? And he's he's put these are really important points at the end. Um, Two hats, one head. Um, hang on. Oh, he said, you're writing for social media networks. So all of this description, you've got to bear in mind that you're writing for the social media network. It's part of your bio information. If you're doing personal appearances, flyers, that kind of thing, it's, this is going to be something that you can use for that. It's also for your fans, too. So they're more likely to copy and paste a concise description to email to friends and family and stuff as well, so you have to bear that in mind. So it says, think of the description as being portable, easy to share, and therefore a major tool in spreading the word campaign. You may get it wrong. It's just another part of the process. Don't delete earlier attempts, often combining elements of the latest attempt with earlier ones um, leads you on to a winner. So you yeah. don't just think, oh, that's rubbish and get rid of it kind of thing. Um, what I also want to add to this is what I'm going to do. If you want to check the Black Star Canyon descriptions, if you're watching live, if you check them now, they're going to look one way. And then later today or tomorrow, they're going to look completely different. So if you want to see like a before and after how that looks now would be a good time to do that. But the second thing is is that um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this information to make a very specific um, description that's short and to the point and all this other stuff. But then I'm also going to be putting um, my links to my website for each book. And on there I'm going to have a more thorough description with all the stuff that I want to put in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Um, that's just another way to make that work, and we'll see how that goes. So I think basically this whole thing that we're talking about is is the fact that these all these points, just from the fact that people have written blogs and there's all that information to take into consideration, it's obviously something that can affect a reader's opinion and their interest. You know, and by we'll see how well it does because, to be honest, this week on Amazon was probably our worst week ever on Amazon, and I think a lot of it has to do with taxes were due this week and all that other crap. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> that's what we were hoping. That's what we're hoping. But on top of that, the strange bit is, is that. We killed it on Apple this week, and we've never done that. And no, we, haven't. we even really sold strange. more on Kobo this week than we did on Amazon. So it is um, a weird thing, but this is a really good time to do this because we're going to make these changes, and then next week we'll have a really good idea is how they worked because our numbers have been so low on Amazon this week. This was just a really bad week on Amazon. Yeah. And I, let me let me change that. It was a bad week on Amazon.com. On .co.uk, .de, and .ca, we were doing okay. But on .com, it was a rough week. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? That's never, ever happened. Ever. So, but that maybe know. ties in with the tax thing, because it's I'm not sure about the taxes over here. Yeah. I think it's earlier in the month for us. So what I want to do now um, is when we were t we were saying earlier that how the book's about the book and not about you, um, we were talking about um, the Amazon author pages. And um, you, I think you can just update your author page anyway, but there's this thing called um, Author Central. And if you Google, like, Amazon Author Central, it'll pop up and you can, like, log into it or start an account. And this is a really cool tool that Amazon has because it not only gives you a way to make your author page really fucking cool, but it also has a ton of different, like, graphs and charts and has all of your books, your rankings, your author ranking. It just has a ton of useful information for you, even though... Um, they haven't updated the main page. The last post Amazon actually put up, I think, was in October 2011. So um, Amazon doesn't update their end of it very often, but you could update <laughs> your end. So um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to my author page. Um, it's... I, I don't know. If you just put Creep Creeperson in the search... It'll be a little thing with my picture with the toilet paper roll eyes, and you can click on that. And it's what it has it's here... It's just on your normal Amazon account. Yeah, if you, if you just go into Amazon and search Creep Creeperson, this pops up. Or if you are looking at any of my books right now, um, under the title of the book, it'll say Creep Creeperson as the author. If you hover over that, it'll give you an option to go to my author page. Now, when you're on your author page, the first thing you have there is your name, and then you have your picture, and you could upload a bunch of different pictures. So I have, like, three different pictures looking ridiculous in each one, one with, like, full makeup on, one with the toilet paper rolls, and one with my mustache curled up because I'm a douchebag, and that's kind of what I do. Um, and, then you, and then you have your bio right there. And you could do all sorts of different stuff. I've seen um, people have a lot of links in their bio and everything like that. Now, on the right side of this, there's, like, a bar down here. And you have, like, a like thing, an email thing, a Facebook, a Twitter thing. So you could do that. So, like, right now I'm actually going to tweet for people to come look at my author page. So I just did that. That's something I just did. Isn't that amazing? Now, I thought that there was a Twitter, a live Twitter feed thing on here, but I can't seem to find it. Um, but 
what you could do, it says stay up to date. You are subscribed to new release emails for, for Creep Creeper Syndrome, okay? Now, that right there is cool, but do not make sure you tell your readers to not use that as the mailing list because when I put a book out, it usually takes Amazon three to four weeks to send me an email saying that I have a new book coming out. So um, don't yeah, use that as your mailing list. You if actually, you're relying for that, relying on that, you're going to be, you're going to yeah, have a huge pissed. delay. Yeah. yeah. Um, then there's also you could put an RSS feed to your blog. So I have it has like my last three blog entries up there on the right side, which That's is really, really cool. cool. Um, and then underneath that. Um, it says customers who also bought uh, uh, customers also bought items by, and so it has this giant list of people who people who bought my books have also bought Chuck Palnick. I always say that guy's name wrong. Um, Sean Platt, Johnny B. Truant, um, Jay Conrath, um, Mark Twain. Oh. I think me and Mark Twain are very similar writers. <laughs> um, so that's a kind of cool thing. And then there's like a little thing like, are you an author? You should submit something to Author Central. But um, And then in the main meat of the page here, it has books by Creep Creeperson. <clears throat> and it'll have like the new... Oh my gosh, people are selling used copies of Stitch for 38 bucks. Oh my gosh, so they are. What a mother effer. No, I'm just kidding. No, that is really fucked up. Okay, anyway. Um, it's whether so, they're actually selling them or not that's the problem. Uh, yeah, if they're selling and ours aren't selling as good, that's a pain in the keister <laughs> next year. Okay, so you have all this stuff. And so this is just what people see when they go on your author page. It's a really neat thing to have. It's very cool. I didn't even realize it was that. So, yeah. Okay, so hang on a second. So from my dad's point of view, we're about, when we get off here tonight, I am going to walk into that room, into hell, in other words, and try and talk him through setting up his Kindle account. How would I get, like, how do I go about setting up an author page for him? Do I do okay. that at the same First time? Or? No, no, no. First off, um, make sure you're using the same email address for all of this stuff because what pisses me off more than anything is I have my Amazon account and my author page under one email, but then I have my KDP account under a different email. And if I log in to my Amazon author page, it logs me out of my KDP. Oh, and so I'll go on KDP, and it's like, yeah, you don't have any sales. And I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, this sucks. I hate everything. Rah, 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 rah. And I get all mad, and I stomp around, and then I'm like, oh, shit, let me log out and log back in. And then yeah. it's like, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're back on track here. Um, so make sure you don't do that. That's a big pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, For me, as well. Have, yeah, you have to start your KDP page first. Okay. For me as well. You know what? <laughs> okay. Um, Can you, you see this, people? This is what I have to cope with. That was that's wit we have witnesses right there seeing uh, what you're like. And you just apologized for being an asshole last week. Just so well, that wasn't even me being an asshole, that was me being fun. Oh. Okay. So anyway, um, you have to have your KDP first because you need to have a book up that you could hook your author page up to. Yeah, okay. So do your KDP first. Once that book is up, and it'll take about 12 hours. It might take a little bit longer on the first book. I don't remember how long it actually took. But what you could do at that point, either um, go to Amazon Author Central I don't know what the URL for that is. Um, or just go to any author author page, and on the bottom right, there will be a thing for it. Um, the other thing you could put on your main page that I haven't done yet, but you could put um, book trailers up. So um, that might be something you want to do. In fact, I might just put up one of these episodes, because you can put up numerous videos. 
So I might just do that. Yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Actually? But Deborah popped in and she said, um, "Like your new covers, you two. Enjoying the show so far today. Good luck with your sales. You two inspire me to get work done." Aww. Oh, thanks, Deborah. Uh, It's things like that that makes me want to keep doing this. I know. Oh, that's really cool, Deborah. <laughs> it is. It is. No, it um, really is. So, but yeah, do the KDP first and then do the author page. Okay. Do we actually know? So, when you're setting up the KDP page, do you want to go through roughly the kind of information that you have to put in? Because I have no clue with the ISBN numbers and stuff. People might have that. We haven't actually ever done that, have we? No, no, no. no. When you do the KDP, it asks you if you have an ISBN or if you want Amazon to give you an ASBN or whatever. And that's fine. If you don't want to buy a $75 freaking barcode for your book... Just let Amazon do it. If you're only going to be selling it on Amazon, it doesn't really matter anyway. And even if you go um, on, like, Kobo or Apple and Barnes & Noble, you don't need it. They'll do it for you. So that's fine. Right. But you just have to fill in the information. It's like, name your book, name the authors, write the description, upload the cover image, upload the book image, <clears throat> and then it'll give you an option to open a previewer to see how the book looks on different devices. Yeah. You just need to really look at one. You don't need to go through all of them on just a print book. Um, that's usually really helpful, like when we were doing Slasherton eBooks, that helped out a lot so I could see how the pages looked on each device because some of the devices it looked like shit on. Yeah, I like, know. Well, we have to think about them. Yeah, the Kindle, like on the Kindle, it looked like shit, but on the iPad and the iPhone, it looked great. Yeah. So, but you want to look and just make sure that, like, none of the, like, formatting's really messed up, that none of the words are off the page, that your links work, stuff like that. Um, I don't think he has any links, though, right? Because he doesn't no. set up. This is the thing, we're arguing at the minute about his Twitter account. So he's hoping he's going to con me into doing it for him. And then keeping it updated and stuff? Yeah, like I've got nothing of my own to do. <laughs> oh, oh, that it is can't so work, funny. people. But it's very interesting from, out, from a starting point of view again, because this is somebody who has no clue. I mean, we didn't have much clue, but at least we were technically aware of Twitter and all that kind of thing and the sort of tools that you are, you know, are, are available to use. Dad has no clue yeah. and is reluctant to use them as well. I don't think he's quite grasped the importance of social networking. You know, his book's not going to be noticed unless he puts the effort in. Because that's the, that's the sacrifice you make with self-publishing. You have to do the running about and the marketing. Yeah. Which is like, which is like you know, the perfect thing, going back to the description, that you are marketing your book, the description you are writing as a publisher. If you are using it as a marketing tool, it's not literature, the description. And you, that's a really important thing. It's probably one of the most important things to remember. Because he was going to use... He, this week he added a big preface, didn't he, to the beginning of the book, which it was really lacking, and it's made a huge difference to the book, I think. But he was just going to use the last paragraph in the preface as the description. And I was like, well, you know, I think it'll be okay. And before I started doing all this research, and now I'm thinking there's no way that's going to cut it, you know? No! So he's going to have to do it. That's probably going to put it off for another three or four days while he faffs about trying to work out the perfect book description for it as well. So it's worth doing, though. That's the thing. By the sound of it, the descriptions are something that are really going to need. It's worth putting the time in to get them right. Yeah. And we're yeah. certainly going to have to do it. 
we're going to have to try doing all yeah, of that's our like work. what the next day is going to be but then I got yeah. to get writing the actual book yeah I know yeah exciting so then once you do all that stuff you have to set your prices and um, again the way the royalties work out is anything under two ninety nine you get a thirty five percent commission on any dollars right yeah well no this is just percentage so right. and then anything two ninety nine to nine ninety nine you get seventy percent anything over 999 you get 35% again now there i think in in india brazil and japan if you're not in kdp no matter what they only give you 35% no matter really? how much the price yeah that's another reason why they're trying to like get you into kdp to get a higher royalty on the rest of the shit and it's just yeah. like kind of bullshit Okay, so do you think as far as um, pricing his book? Pricing his book, I think right now, I mean, you obviously, I think, need to do a free thing if your categories are right. So okay. I would put it at two ninety nine for free so it looks like a better deal. Yeah. Or even like four ninety nine for free, because it's a pretty lengthy book, so you could justify a four ninety nine price, kinda. And once the free runs over, drop the price to ninety nine cents for like a month. You think? Yeah. And then in the description, put. Um, Normally four ninety nine, but now nine ninety nine until June first. See, all this information is like valuable, and we're just skimming over it. So we maybe need to do this in more detail at a later date. Well, I mean, or just rewind the show and listen to that part again. I know it's confusing though. Like for example, that that's something <coughs> we've forgotten to mention. This week you found out about a way of doing more categories. Yeah. That worth talking um, about? Yeah, basically Amazon gives you the opportunity to do two categories. And Kobo and um Give an example. Kobo, like uh for me, like fiction horror is one category and then like um mystery suspense. And then I would be fucked. That's all I would get to put for Black Star Canyon. But then it gives you seven keywords. And what they don't explain to you is that those keywords can also be used to be getting categories. And categories is where you um, rank higher in certain categories. Like, for instance, um, Bloodlust Romance, um, the first book, is free. And ever since it's been free, it's been ranking in the top ten of horror comedies. And it's just barely a horror comedy. It's like really dark humor. Like it's almost like not funny. But it's yeah. just like kinda like you're like, oh god, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, but that's because I'm ranked in horror comedies and that's how you get those little things. All the creepology books are ranked in um satire or parodies. Uh Killing a P three is an espionage. You know, you need to have your categories set up. And when you do good in those little categories, it pushes you up in your, um, like, general fiction category to be, like, in the top 100 and all that other shit. And that's what you really, really, really want. So the more categories you could rank in, the easier it'll be for people to find you. The more categories your book is in, the easier it will be for people to find you. So when you're doing your seven keywords, what um, this guy said, and I can't remember what show it was on. It was, uh, was it, it might have been on, no, I think it was on the self-publishing roundtable. Oh. As I heard it. But they had this guy on, and for the life of me, I can't remember his name, and I feel horrible and awful about it. 
But um, if you want to look up the actual show, it was self publishing roundtable, and I think the title of the episode was um, Amazon Categories. It was really simple like that. Yeah. But so basically what you do, you could go on, I think KDP actually even has this on one of their things. It's a list of all the categories that aren't, because when you're putting your book in, there's only like, I think, 80 categories you could choose from. But there's actually like 200 categories. And why that thing isn't in the thing, nobody knows. It doesn't make any fucking sense, but that's Amazon, you know? But if so you where put, do you find this extra keyword thing? Just search list of Amazon categories in Google. Oh, right, okay. It'll pop up. But there's certain ways you have to word them in order for Am the Amazon bots to pick up that that's a category. Because if I were to put, like I had a list here of um, different, sorry about the paper turning, guys. I'm trying to find this. This is really good. I'm glad you brought this up. So sorry it's taking so long. I'm almost there. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. I hope. I feel like I'm getting farther away. <laughs> I feel like I should do a tap dance or something just to entertain everybody. You probably should. This isn't making any sense to me. I thought it was right here. Maybe it's not. Okay, let me go back this way. Um... Oh, we're getting close, folks. We are I getting I've heard close. that one before. Oh, my gosh. You are just the peanut gallery from H-E double hockey sticks today. <laughs> oh, now my arm is getting tired. This is the most riveting episode we've ever done. <laughs> Five minutes of paper turning. I'm almost 100% positive. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not an idiot. I don't know where it is now. But basically, there were things like, um, oh, I am an idiot. I'll tell you why. I bet it's in this book. I have too many notebooks. Did you know that? I no, I was that. wrong. I have no idea where it is. But basically, like, there are categories like disturbing, scary, um... Psychic, paranormal, um, genetic research. I put zombie alpha in genetic research. Yeah. And it's in there now. Um, so there's all these different things. So how you put it in is when you're doing your seven keywords, you're like da 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 comma, da 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 comma, da 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 comma, da 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 comma. And then when you write <clears throat> your seventh keyword or your sixth keyword, I can't remember how it works. It'll tell you because it'll say stop or it'll let you keep going. If you write, like, if you don't put a comma and you put, like, occult, police procedural, paranormal, psychic, disturbing, scary, dark, and you just keep writing all these words, it'll just let you keep writing until the bot says stop. And now you have what, those... without any spaces, just like a huge long. No, 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 no. You can put spaces, but you can't put commas. Commas is how Amazon knows that that keyword is now done. Right. Okay. So you just do it with a space. No comma. On the last word. Right. Okay. Or on the second to last word. Okay. So after number six. And this is when you're setting up your KDP select page. Yeah, because you have to do your categories and you have to do your um, keywords for each book. Okay, so, so I'm going to have to actually book, do this. I would pick historical fiction and British something. or well, There's some British category in there. <clears throat> and then in keywords, I would put World War I, comma, military, comma, um, yeah, look on the keyword list. Or the category okay. list. But there's a ton of categories that you can put in there. So we can basically just put it in anything that it's vaguely linked to. 
it should be linked to it because if not, you're going to get pissed off people who buy your book thinking it's a romantic comedy. No, no, obviously, but yeah. but ones that you know it's going to fall under. But exactly. Even if it's only in a sort of mild way. I'm very excited to redo the description. Actually, let me run this by you. This was the first draft of the new description I did. And okay. you should tell me if this works. Um, when the mayor of Black Star Canyon, Jonathan Kensington, finds a body of a young woman in the woods, it starts a chain of events that threatens everyone in Black Star Canyon and the future of the town itself. Detectives Lucas and Cheney can't seem to unravel the mystery fast enough as more townspeople continue to be killed, go missing, or end up injured. With the help of Sheriff Reagan and Deputy Sue Callahan, Lucas and Cheney find that these crimes are not only turning the town upside down, but also revealing the secrets of its inhabitants, secrets that most of the townspeople would do anything to keep hidden. Is that too much? I think it's a little wordy. Yeah, I think it's a little wordy. I think we could get it shorter than that. And I think at first, the first sentence, we've got to do something with... Um, yeah. I mean, that's not the thing on Amazon. That's what I was working on on the website. Yeah, well, that's what you need to do. Bring something to, do to that separate. over. Yeah. But I think, as well, you've got to do something to do with the reaction of Jonathan when he finds the body, what the body looks like kind of thing. So it's like powerful. So it's, it's not just him walking and seeing this body. It's like stumbles across or is terrified by the, you know... Yeah. The, Power words. Yeah. Your I emotion. Think out of anything we got out of today, it's power words. Power words and the fact you're writing it as a publisher. Yeah. You're not writing it as, your, as an author. That was another thing that I read as well that I haven't written down for some reason, but he had mentioned, I think it was the Richard Ridley, <coughs> had said that one of the biggest problems is that for authors to write their own book description is because they want to cram in as much information as they can to tell the reader about the book. You know, it's very difficult to cut yourself off and do it as a... Just as a, a filmmaker, when we um, would submit our films to the distributor <clears throat> and then the distributor makes the fucking back of the DVD we would get that back, and I would be like, what the fuck is this shit? And I was always pissed. But that was their marketing department saying this is the best way to market this movie. And it would be yeah. like, just like, some, and I'm just, oh, there was some yeah, shit. That's the thing. He said it's really, really difficult. It's a common thing because authors can't um, sort of be ruthless about it. They find it really hard to take themselves out of the story because you're trying to tell everybody everything about the book. You're trying to get everything in there crammed in and it just ends up being confusing and irrelevant. You know, you've got to pick the power points in there. You've got to make it pithy, sharp to the point and emotional to get those points over there so that people are like, wow, how's it going to end? I like the sound of this. This sounds awesome. You know, yeah. not like well, I might as well just, like, I've read it now, you know, from the description. Well, there's, like, movie trailers that we've seen that it was, like... I know, that's the perfect like, example of me, like, what's the point? I've what's, seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect example. Oh. All, this, all the spoilers, all the reveals, everything in the trailer. So you're just like, well, I've seen it, I've seen everything. I'm not going to be scared because I know what the ghost looks like. It's the yeah. same principle, I think. So it's worth spending time on. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. So I think, shall we go for, go to wrap it up? 
for this week. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, we're winding the show down right now. So next week we have um, the relaunch of season one of Black Star Canyon. So make sure you have that. And we're going to be giving away a uh, season one Black Star Canyon to one of our lucky viewers. I'm not okay with all the... It should yeah. be people who are actually watching the show live. Yeah, we should do that. That would be really cool. And remember, this will be with all the revised covers in as well. And it'll be an ebook version, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But it will have all the new covers in there. Yeah. So We're also, this is like, I haven't discussed this, but we kind of did. But we're also kind of, we'd like to do a print version, wouldn't we? Like um, a poster version of all six. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Which we'll be able to give away at some point. Obviously, we haven't even thought about this properly yet, but we did discuss that we wanted to do, like, a poster with all six. You know what we should do? We should give that away on the live Facebook event. Yeah, that would be really cool, actually, That's wouldn't really it? That's a really good idea. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Really cool print. Good job. That looked really nice to go. Yeah, that was quite good off the top of my head, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I surprised myself sometimes. It <laughs> was awesome. Good job. Fine. So, um, what do we have to discuss? Is that everything? That's it. I just uh, make sure you join the mailing list at creeperson.com. That's C R E E P E R S I N. And, um,. Go to Amazon and get Black Star Canyon because the whole world is going to change within two months. So make it happen, Captain. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. <laughs> We're also on Twitter. I'm Brit Zombie Girl on Twitter just to complicate things. Yep, I'm and on Creeperson. Creeperson and Brit Zombie Girl on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Oh, go to podcast451.com, and if you want the audio feeds of these shows, go to iTunes, and you can subscribe. Yeah, I think that's it. Sounds about yeah. it. Okay, so thanks Enzo, to everybody sorry, for tuning we're just in. Wrapping the show up. So. Uh, Enzo, and why am I yelling? Why do I fucking do that? I do as well. I wanted to call him. I yell at everybody when I'm talking to him on the sidebar, and I'm doing it again now. <laughs> fucking shit. Okay, <laughs> bye, Boxer Canyon. Okay, and that's it. So we'll see you guys next week. See you next week.